Today we are working on, um, again with tonal values, and in this uh, painting, this exercise, we're looking for the mid value. We've talked about that a little bit in those drills, and uh, in this drawing and painting of the Grand Tetons, I'm uh, thinking of establishing the big shape uh, through the big mid value. You see me applying uh, alizarin crimson and uh, yellow ochre uh, to the to the peaks themselves, and as I come down, I'm going to be adding um, similar values, only with different colors, um, and trying to create sort of one big shape that has a variety of color, but the tonal value is pretty close to the same. I'm adding more lizard crimson, more yellow ochre as I establish the negative shapes of the river moving through the landscape. And while this is wet, I'm introducing some ultramarine blue and taking advantage of soft edges, leaving some, some of those uh, brighter areas unpainted and uh, relying on the natural ability of watercolor to blend the colors for me and trying to keep the brushwork fluid, smooth, expressive. These are qualities that I like in watercolor, so I'm trying to affect those myself. Staying with the same palette, but each time I go in, I'm picking up a different color and blending them on the paper. As I place the trees, again, I'm aware of the, the shapes of the pine and trying to create a interesting pattern of pines through a variety of spaces, variety of heights, widths, uh, etc. This uh, <clears throat> scene is showing a, a low light scene. So the mid value, the big mid value, is rather dark. In assessing your motif, whenever you're in front of your motif, a good question to ask or a good observation to make is how light or dark is that big mid value? That will help to set the tone of your painting and uh, give you more information in, in choosing the colors from your palette. And now I'm extending this ultramarine blue up uh, through the foothills and into some of the shadowed side of the rock. You can see the, the white of the paper for the river is quite strong. We're going to mute that later. And it will become part of the big mid value as well. Our lightest areas, areas of highest contrast, are going to be up within the peaks themselves against a very light sky. So all these uh, strokes and colors that I'm adding are guided by that thought that I want to uh, have a, a general value, a general tone running through this lower section of the painting with more contrast, more brilliance in the upper parts. The sky is a wash of cobalt blue on top of a little yellow ochre, very pale. I want those reds to glow so I'm keeping it very light and uh, since the painting is dried I can go in pretty freely and paint with ultramarine blue and just uh, I'm blending it to the shoreline so that the edges are a little smoother, a little um, softer and uh, keeping it kind of bright up on top near that uh, big peak of the Grand Tetons and add a few darks in the foreground to, to finalize the painting and uh, here it is this is the final painting, and I believe you can perceive the, the mid-tone that runs from the bottom all the way to the top with a more contrast up on the peaks.